Hey guys, so I want to do a little off-the-cuff sort of explanation of the new haptic feedback in the latest versions of Refloat. Uh, so first things first, uh, you want to make sure you have your pushbacks all in order because this haptic uh, feedback is going to kick in anytime you're hitting uh, duty cycle alerts or high voltage and low voltage. So first things first, you just want to make sure those are configured how you want them to. Uh, here I've got all default settings, and for me personally, I don't actually like duty cycle pushback, but I do like the buzz. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set this angle to zero degrees, but I'm still going to leave the duty cycle threshold at the uh, duty cycle percent that I want it to kick in. Um, and also keep in mind, 95% uh, duty cycle is max. That's where your board is going to nosedive if you try to push it faster. So just keep that in mind when you're setting the threshold. But now moving into haptic feedback. Uh, so the first things you see are frequencies and strength. So uh, duty cycle, uh, you have your strength of frequency for duty cycle alerts and then error alerts, which error is just high voltage, low voltage, uh, things like that. Um, and by default, the duty cycle frequency, uh, it's just the pitch of the haptic buzz. Uh, that's set to basically be, basically be the same pitch as haptic buzz on future motion boards. Uh, and then error frequency is set slightly higher pitch just to make it stand out compared to duty cycle alerts. Uh, so I personally like keeping those at defaults. Um, sometimes if you fine tune the frequency, you can find frequencies that actually sound uh, louder and are more noticeable. Uh, that just depends on your motor and your whole setup. Uh, so you're free to mess with them if you want, but if you don't want to mess with it, that's totally fine. The default values are totally fine. Now for strength, uh, by default, these are on, but they're set at pretty conservative values. Uh, for now, let's let them uh, set, let's keep them at default and we're going to come back around to it. Uh, so next we have vibration frequency. Uh, again, I'd probably leave this at default, but you're free to mess with it if you want. Uh, and then you also have vibration strength, and it is off by default, uh, but you can set this up to, I believe it maxes out at 25 amps is a lot. I probably wouldn't set it that high, um, but a realistic value if you want some extra like vibration, that's basically like what you feel under your feet, um, along with the audible uh, haptic buzz. Uh, setting it around like between 7 to 12 uh, is usually a, a good range, uh, but I'll show you in a second how you can actually test it and figure out what's good for you. So uh, here we have duty cycle solid offset. So when you hit your duty cycle threshold from the pushback alerts tab, so here I have it set to 80%, once I start hitting that, uh, it's going to give me an on and off buzz, uh, very similar to future motion, um, like speed uh, haptic buzz. Um, so with this uh, duty cycle solid offset, this is the offset uh, past your duty cycle threshold that it's going to go from that on and off buzz, the beep, 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 beep. It's going to turn to just a solid haptic buzz, just continuous buzz. Uh, so let's say I want it to start beeping at 80%, but once I hit 87%, sort of a halfway between that threshold and uh, maxing out on duty cycle, uh, I want it to really alert me by just going to a solid tone. I can set that to 7%, and now it's going to kick in a solid tone at 87% duty cycle. Uh, so that's what that does. Uh, current threshold, this is also disabled by default. Uh, but this is looking at both motor current and battery current. And basically, it's going to give you haptic buzz once you hit that threshold of your, like as you're approaching your motor current max or your battery current max, whichever is first. So um, sometimes I set this, sometimes I don't. Um, but uh, you, if you're trying to use it effectively, you could set it to something that gives you a lot of headroom just so you have room to react to it, something like 70% or something like that. Uh, the only thing with current threshold you have to keep in mind is haptic buzz itself does use current. Uh, so if you set this really high, like let's say 90%, 95%, just the buzz itself 
might use the remaining power you have um, to do the buzz itself. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful with it. Uh, for me, at least in like a racing context, I'm personally okay with that because I'd still rather uh, max out the board, but it like uh, it warns me right away that it is actively dipping, uh, essentially, uh, rather than me just having to go by feel. Uh, so usually in a racing context, I still set that to around like 80% or so. Uh, but you do want to keep in mind uh, that it is going to use some current. And that's also based on your audible strength. And uh, more notably, your vibration strength uh, is going to use the most current. So that's also why vibration is off by default. Uh, but you can utilize vibration buzz if you want. All right, now the rest is essentially just setting how this all scales, right? So this audible strength for duty cycle and error, uh, like three volts, and this applies to vibration strength as well. These are actually maxes. This is the max strength it's gonna use for haptic buzz. And you're hitting that max strength at this default speed. Uh, so by default, it's 30 kilometers per hour. I think that's around like 20, 22 miles per hour, something like that. I didn't do the math beforehand. So whatever it ends up being. Um, uh, so that's where you're going to hit that max speed. But uh, starting at zero miles per hour, uh, you're actually going to start at this minimum strength. By default, it's 20%. So let's say I had this strength set to 10 volts. It's actually going to start at 2 volts at 1 mile per hour. And then as you get faster, uh, depending on your speed, it's going to de determine how strong of a haptic buzz to do. Um, this is basically to counter the effects of like uh, wind noise, wind resistance, um, vibrations in the ground, in the street or trail. Uh, essentially, the faster you're going, you're going to need it to be a bit louder to be more noticeable. Uh, so that's why we have a minimum strength. And then by default, there's also a bit of curvature where the faster you're going, uh, obviously, as you get faster and faster, that wind resistance gets kind of exponential. Uh, so by default, we have a curve to it that the faster you go, you're going, uh, it's going to increase the strength of haptic buzz faster and faster. Um, so by default, these values are fine. If you're someone that rides really fast, uh, I'd consider bumping up the strength speed. Uh, I personally, in my day-to-day -day, like uh, trail riding and things like that, I'll max out around 30 miles per hour or something like that. Uh, so I set this to either 50 or 55 kilometers per hour. Um, and that way... Uh, I have a bit more control uh, in that the faster I'm going, even up to 30 miles per hour, it's still increasing the strength of haptic buzz. Uh, and if I'm doing this, I'll end up setting this audible strength uh, pretty high. Uh, again, it very much depends on your, your setup, the specific motor you have, and things like that. And we'll go over in a second uh, how to fine tune that. Uh, but I think at times I end up running up to even like 8 volts or even higher. Uh, just because at that high, high speed, 30 miles an hour plus, uh, one wind resistance becomes pretty huge. So you need a lot of uh, haptic buzz to overcome that. Um, but yeah, essentially you want to set this to around what you think you're going to max out at. And then you can set your strengths accordingly. So for actually testing it, uh, what I would recommend doing is going over to pushback alerts and just setting your duty cycle threshold really low. You can set it to something like 30%, 40%. Um, just something that's gonna kick in at pretty low speed so you can get it to be active consistently. And then when you're riding, you can feel it kick in, you can hear it kick in. Uh, and uh, theoretically, it should also change how loud it is as you're going faster and faster, depending on whatever you set your maximum strength speed to. So based on all of this, uh, you can test it out yourself. You can see how loud it is while you're riding. And then you can set this uh, audible strength accordingly. Uh, you can set the error strength accordingly. Uh, I personally like to keep error strength a little lower than duty cycle just because I don't care about it quite as much, but some people might prioritize that even more. So it's totally your call how you set that. 
Um, and then you can also experiment with the vibration strength. See if you like that. See if you don't like it. Um, see how much of that you want. Uh, it's all something that you should experiment with. Um, but by default, honestly, all of the default settings are fine. Uh, the only things I would look at right away are um, slowly bumping up these strengths to what makes sense for your style of riding just to make sure it's noticeable uh, and actually effective in that way. Um, potentially trying out vibration, bumping that up and seeing if you like that or not. Um, and then also setting this maximum strength speed to something that makes sense again for your style of riding. Um, also the duty cycle solid offset. Um, you want to make sure that makes sense for whatever uh, duty cycle you have. So like if I had to set it like 75% instead of 80%, I might set that solid offset to 10% that way. At 75%, it's giving me beep, 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 but at 85% duty cycle, then it's giving me a solid buzz. I think that about covers it. Um, uh, the only other things to note is with the error buzz, uh, that also has a unique uh, pattern. So rather than a constant beep, 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 it's instead going to be uh, beep, 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 beep. So just another thing to look out for so you know to expect that. Um, and additionally, I had one more thing, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, oh yes, uh, for the duty cycle. Uh, so it's not looking directly at your duty cycle in the moment. Uh, there is a filtering to it. Uh, so this is just to prevent it constantly being set off by small duty cycle spikes that aren't really, um, representative of the duty cycle you're actually like coasting at. Um, so keep that in mind and uh, know that the duty cycle alerts are essentially based on what duty cycle you're like averaging in the moment. It's still pretty responsive, uh, but keep that in mind. Uh, so a duty cycle threshold you had set in the past um, with like old versions of the flow package might not make quite as much sense. Uh, you might have set them uh, higher uh, than what you might want here. So uh, when in doubt, I would set it more conservatively. Start at 75% or even 70%. Um, see where that kicks in. Uh, and then uh, based on how much actual headroom you want and whatnot, you can uh, bump it up over time. So yeah, I think that about covers it. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. Thanks.